so there's one quick announcement not announcement but just like a uh, now i created one org called the internals where uh, uh, we'll be keeping all the discussions there so right now uh, today we had created some uh, uh, code snippets some sample codes uh, uh, which we discussed during the uh, uh, discussion and uh, that uh, you can find there also um, the motive of uh, having this uh, in a github uh, so everyone can share uh, resources later as well uh, and there will be one point where uh, you can find all uh, those internal uh, discussions related stuffs um and yes as everyone know that uh, this is more of a discussion rather than a talk so uh, let's keep it uh, more uh, interactive and uh, uh, please share uh, your insight uh, so we have uh, set up some certain agenda but uh, it's okay to not cover all of this agenda uh, we can uh, probably try to cover uh, as much as possible uh, but uh, let's discuss uh, in depth uh, on every of this topic uh, so we we should be clear about uh, those uh, topics we are discussing and please uh, feel uh, free to share your insights um, even though you are uh, you might not be correct uh, just share it uh, sharing that might help you to uh, might uh, help everyone to think in a different way um, and that that's a, that can be a good brainstorming uh, for every one of us so please do share please do uh, speak uh, to make it uh, better, uh, like a very interactive uh, discussion. Um, I think Vivek uh, also have something uh, to share uh, today. Um, I also have created uh, uh, regarding the same uh, doc. So we will start with our agenda. Mm, yeah, let's go. Um, the first thing is what what uh, a modern module bundler is like a why we need a, a why we even need a module bundler uh, wasn't that a older thing of uh, using uh, a script tag was uh, enough okay few folks join this <clears throat> and anyone want to share like a why that is script thing is not enough uh, to create a website so i would probably share my experience very old experience like when i had no idea like when i was just starting with javascript mm -hmm. so i used to use jquery mm -hmm. so like like when using jquery i used to use a lot of other uh, like you know third party things like jquery ui things mm -hmm. so if i misplace the script tag like the ui tag the, the third part library above jquery it would break so I have to keep uh, keep keep note that which script tag comes first, which script tag comes next. So like I used to like, you know, uh, like duplicate jQuery multiple times in multiple places. So it was like very much uh, frustrating. So, so yeah, one one was that like uh, uh, you have to uh, remember the order, like mm -hmm. in which order you are loading. And uh, also if you mess up with the order, uh, anyone, uh, we would have like a uh, import jQuery twice yeah, and some yeah. some other side effect would side happen. Uh, you would uh, change uh, the jQuery name on one and the other would uh, yeah. uh, override it. Um, order dependency was one. Um, and the biggest problem was uh, in my experience was that globals like jQuery would introduce a dollar x dollar global. Some yes. other would instead, like give another global, so it was difficult in, in those things. Yes, um, globals uh, being one, uh, but uh, don't you think like uh, that was one of the good thing as well? Like uh, you should be able to get jQuery anywhere. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, that, that was I would say like it had good and bad. I would say yeah, agreed. Um, the problem with uh, that would be this: like uh, if you are exposing uh, some global variables. Uh -huh. uh, Third part, if you are adding any third party module, uh, if that is a, like evil, uh, oh. evil dot js, then uh, it would like, yeah, <laughs> that can override can do... jQuery and then like, like, like it says like it works with jQuery, then it comes in inside, like when I include it, it's going to override dollar and give me something else. <laughs> yes. Sir. And uh, the other pain is like, um, uh, 
earlier we used to write everything on a single file mm-hmm. uh, but that is not uh, very scalable uh, you can't keep one file one css file for your whole product you can't keep uh, one js file for your whole product and if you are uh, keeping a different different file then uh, deciding which uh, script to load uh, mm-hmm. uh, beforehand uh, it's again uh, mm-hmm. a tough part so you need certain tools uh, to give uh, that and also like a uh, kind of we were uh, um, limited by the things which are supported by all browser uh, we couldn't use uh, any like uh, es6 standards uh, if if you don't bring the mm-hmm. tool so uh, how many of you have used uh, any uh, build tools uh, like gulp and grunt before you have used yeah. uh and how was the experience why why you choose to use uh, gulp and grunt oh man i am the fresher and i <laughs> didn't use but yeah compared to like i don't use i don't see grunt and gulp anymore i mean that's been completely overshadowed by web browser and everything yeah actually here in uh, it hacker rank we use gulp uh, and plus webpack as well because there are certain things which uh, webpack can't do mm-hmm. okay. and um gulp is more of like a task runner yeah. so you can run anything there i think even vs code uses the gulp i think vs code source code they i didn't find any webpack config they were using gulp to build uh, okay to vs code and vs code i know about monaco editor so monaco editor have a webpack uh, okay. uh, bundler uh, so there is a monaco webpack plugin yeah no that i'm talking about maybe the source code of the vs code so I, like when i was going through the vs code mm-hmm. source code there were a lot of gulp files gulp files okay yeah i'm, I'm not very sure on that uh, um it it might make sense for uh, no but there also you need bundling right uh, because uh, yeah. there are multiple files maybe uh, i think they are using it to separate the monaco editor maybe as you were saying like they're separating out monaco editor from the vs code like bundling maybe i'm not sure and uh, the gulp and grunt was uh, kind of like a Uh, on that direction uh, of having one bundle instead of uh, having like a multiple bundles and that was true on that time because uh, uh, that time uh, it was mostly uh, as people were using http and uh, people were uh, uh, using those optimization like a uh, uh, create a css sprites for images uh, uh, create uh, a single js bundle for your spas uh, but that is no longer true uh, with http Uh, http2 right like uh, right earlier there used to be throttle uh, uh, on the browser level uh, you might i'm not sure about the exact number of requests but it was uh, around 5 uh, maximum parallel request you can send uh, something was yeah, around like different browsers had like different uh, thing, but i think uh, chrome was around at 6 per domain i think like per I, domain uh, you can have yeah so people used to break it uh, on different domains uh, i remember like um, uh, keeping files on a different domain just for the sake uh, of uh, getting them uh, loaded parallelly uh, yeah we will used to have like different cdn providers uh, uh, image 0 image 1 dot yeah, yeah. Uh, this image 2 dot this and yeah that's in that but with http2 because all those requests are multiplied on a single request uh, those things are no longer true uh now i don't think uh, even css sprites are uh, uh valid optimization those are more of like a um, counter optimization <laughs> an optimized optimization um so uh doing that with tool is easy and gulp and grunt uh, uh, brought that thing like um, you provide a source of array of uh, uh, your source files and uh, create a bundle uh out of uh, it uh, uh you can create multiple bundles but uh, you need to know everything beforehand um like you need to know like uh, for this uh, particular bundle i would be needing this many files uh, and creating a proper uh, difference between like a uh, people usually used to create like a this is a page 1 bundle page 2 bundle and if something is said between page 1 and page 2 um creating uh, those common strategies uh, it's very tough uh, uh, with gulp and grunt uh, you can but it's like a too much of uh, uh, grunt work uh, you have to do um and then 
also i think uh, uh, that um, because everything uh, works on a concatenation basis so probably um, you have to expose thing as a global variables yeah. because you can't um, import uh, like uh, you you can't if uh, you're concatenating two files you can't probably use uh, uh, that variable if it is not uh, globally exposed uh, so again uh, that global uh, thing was also not uh, getting solved with that um, the browser if i uh, came and that kind of solved it a little bit uh, that used to create uh, this dependency uh, yeah. resolution yeah. thing right yeah. it, uh, i think it had a lot but i think one thing browser frame is missing was it didn't have a lot of inbuilt stuff uh, like, like like for example for example in webpack we have a lot of things that comes out of the box with webpack uh, I think that's what I I read about when people don't want web browserify but they want webpack because like webpack or browserify was like like we need to do a lot of stuff to get things started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Browser webpack actually kind of like for example code splitting that was not I think built with browserify so we need code splitting was not uh, built uh, with it was just uh, the dependency, dependency resolution uh, uh, which it was covering. Um, so. Let's talk about what all uh, a modern module bundler give other uh, than uh, creating a single bundle other than bundling. Mm -hmm. So the first is thing is definitely uh, creating bundles out of multiple file uh, and then uh, so this is like a dependency resolution. Let's see resolution. Like importing multiple different file types. Like for example, we can import yes, CSS, uh, uh, support for uh, support for different file types. When I when I saw the first import uh, importing a CSS into JavaScript file, I was like, what the heck? I'm importing CSS into JavaScript. <laughs> and why why do people why do, do that? Do that? <laughs> Yeah. But now it has become a common thing. I right? just search and, how and it code. makes sense, right? Like uh, because uh, uh, you treat everything as a, a single module. Mm -hmm. So and all of those CSS, uh, HTML, JavaScript, everything is a, a one, dependency, one dependency, one component. So you have to treat it as a one component. Uh, support for different file type. Uh, then uh, code splitting. And then common uh, things they split it out, like window things and those kind of stuff that they do. Yes. Um, uh, what? what other, um, so Webpack also gives you like an on-demand loading also. So lazy chunks are also supported. Code splitting and lazy chunks. Then another thing which is also part of the agenda is uh, tree shaking is also something that module bundlers uh, now try to support somehow like uh, tree shaking and it does work uh, very well uh, it works only with the ESM modules uh, though right yeah. uh, but uh, it does work uh, uh, there there are some uh, corner cases which we'll be discussing um, where tree shaking fails and why it fails I think some optimization is like um, and then yes, you need uh, like uh, minification, minification, uh, and aggregation, aggregify. Okay. And then uh, it's also support like uh, splitting out chunk in different formats. Like you need an UMD chunk, you need a CJS chunk, you need an ES module chunk. So you can like, if you're producing libraries, you can just say Webpack, give me all these chunks and or Rollup will give you all these chunks. Different bundle type, uh, yes, UMD or uh, AMD or like a uh, common JS. Um, uh, JS or an ES yeah. module. Yeah, EJS, ESM. Uh, I don't know if it's included in creating bundles out of multiple files only. It's like uh, we can also create bundles for specific environments or specific device types, bundle for mobile, different bundle for mobile, for desktop, for so, development environment, I guess. Uh, that's more part of uh, uh, Babel, Babel preset ENV. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, the Babel comes with uh, your Webpack. So kind of, uh, you can say like a, 
creating bundle double transpiles your code but uh, specifically targeting for different environments eh, or specifically targeting device types i don't think that's like uh to that, that provide on a babel preset env right uh, which uh, target environment you are uh, transpiling to um webpack uh, is there any option on webpack no i don't think so. i don't think so either yeah uh, uh, things like source map yes source map is one important part yeah. so and i think one important part of the today's modern world i would say is like they need to be very pluggable like very pluggable and they need to be very much flexible uh, flexible and hackable that's what like separates out webpack from any other bundle of okay. ecosystem but plugin ecosystem was uh, kind of true with uh, your gulp uh, as well um, they also had a lot um here it's easy easy uh, because there you might have to write your own uh, task for each of uh, those plugin um here you don't have to do that like uh, it's just a loader uh, uh, at the end um but yeah so uh, do people know what source maps are and why we, why do we need source maps so in an environment like staging uh that is not development but uh, not production we would want to debug using the original source code yes yes um and uh, uh, with uh, all those tools uh, gulp and uh, grunt couldn't do a better job at that because uh, uh, they they would not have a proper mapping uh, with uh, actual files column number and the source maps are uh, that right like uh, uh, for uh, every code part uh, they will have for every column number and row number they will have uh, uh, the actual source code and uh, the file path uh, as well so chrome can beautifully so the actual source code uh, while uh, you are using the minified version other uh, thing is uh, manifest and version yep so uh, people might have done uh, this like uh, they uh, earlier we used to do this right um, create uh, 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 append v1 v2 v3 yeah. <laughs> a, on each of our assets mm -hmm. and uh, that is very bad because uh, um, to update we one like a, to update a version of one file uh -huh. you bust cache of all of your all files of um so uh, and and uh, do people know like uh, how this manifesting work uh, uh, how this versioning work uh, uh, with a modern thing isn't like base caches that they use huh yeah so if we see this does it generate a hash based on the content of the file uh it depends like um, uh, you can decide uh, whether you want to generate the hash based on file or based on source code um uh, you can uh, create based on uh, output code or source code or you can even uh, decide based on uh, like it should be combination of file paths something um okay. but most of the time i think uh, people use uh, uh the source code the webpack by default thing is a uh, combine concatenate all the source code part and for applying any plugin um, so if you are adding any source map uh, url on the end uh, it would not uh, affect uh, your uh, hash file okay understood uh, even uh, like a ugly file if you are changing your ugly file strategy uh, it usually doesn't affect uh, the source file but uh, that you can uh, uh, control by yourself you can decide like at what point uh you want to create uh, this manifest um and even um, uh, i have seen this like um, it create a same hash for uh, css files as well so it's definitely not uh, the uh, end content so if you are importing any css file inside that uh, the hash uh, for css file would be also the same mm -hmm. 
Uh, so it's mostly like a source uh, overall source. So um, now in this, uh, whenever you are having this hash, you don't have to manually think about uh, versioning because uh, um, if your source changes for a bundle, uh, let's say uh, to simplify it, if a content changes for a bundle, uh, the hash would change and um, it, it would not affect uh, any other uh, uh, asset. Uh, so the cache would not burst for uh, other assets only uh, for the thing which is changing. Uh, but in a source code, we don't write something like this, right? Like uh, we don't know the information about the hash. And that is where this manifest uh, uh, plays uh, its role. Um, now, manifest is just a, like a object which have this mapping. So let's say if uh, we have the hacker rank uh, R vendor, uh, it would be something like vendor.js uh, and then uh, it would have the hash version uh, as a value. So I think in our organization, we were like initially we were using React and then we were getting it rendered from a backend, like, okay. like, like a Razor template. Uh -huh. So in Razor templates, we wouldn't know that it's files to include in the script tag. So we were actually reading this manifest. Manifest. Uh, and then yeah. for each key it had, we just used to append the script tags into the Razor template. Yes. So the script would uh, now look like uh, uh, yes. a source, uh, your uh, manifest dot the uh, file dot, name. Uh, the file yep. Uh, and you probably want to add some uh, I set the path on this so, uh, obsidian path, uh, obsidian path plus something like this. So uh, you, uh, on your code base, uh, you just have to the hacker. And uh, when you're using Webpack, you don't have to even do that. Uh, Webpack uh, runtime internally takes care of it. Uh, but yeah, the main point of having manifest uh, is this. And we use like, simply cache to infinite. It. Like we don't even care about like cache timing or hash. Yeah, hash with the hash, we don't have to care, care about, about the, the, the uh, time. Uh, time. So we said say infinite. So as long as our index yes. or HTML doesn't change, we don't. Uh, care about we, we don't care about it. Um, any anything else which uh, uh, new tool provide us? Uh, manifest version. I did wrote something here. And manifest resolution. How to loading? Ha. How to loading? So on a dev environment, um, earlier with the gulp and grunt, uh, what used to happen, it used to watch uh, a file. And then uh, if you're changing the file, uh, it will run uh, your gulp task again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, the whole page would refresh. Uh, uh, so hot reloading was kind of not possible possible there because uh, they uh, like a uh, gulp and grunt doesn't uh, uh, put any runtime uh, inside, inside your application while webpack uh, into like has its own runtime so with runtime it can control like what particular module to update and not update the whole application but to be honest when that auto reloading came in it was like a magic for me like initially when i used to do front end development i used to reload manually after the auto relate came, it was magic. <laughs> so, it's like, so with this, I think hot reloading it's like a next stage of that. It was. Okay. So um, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and and the biggest benefit is like um. Uh, you don't have to worry about how your end uh, build files would look like. You just have to uh, worry about how your code uh, should look like. Uh, and a tool takes care of it, like uh, how to resolve the files, how to uh, create a separate chunks. Um, and uh, doing this by yourself is like a big uh, nightmare, right? So definitely we need uh, something. Now, other question uh, which people ask, like uh, now uh, everyone knows about uh, ESM uh, module, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's first see like what all different type of module systems are there. So uh, the first thing was uh, uh, global. Uh, if you add uh, something on a script tag, uh, it probably add things on a global uh, uh, 
global variables. Um, then uh, with a node, when Node.js came, uh, we got a common JS pattern where um, it does resolve your dependency, uh, but there's more of like a, uh, uh, what do you say? Um, it's not a lazy thing. Uh, it's more of like a, um, on a file you say like uh, this file is dependent on uh, uh, some external module or uh, some uh, other files and it will require it will uh, synchronously require uh, all those mm -hmm. files but i think they regret about it still now <laughs> that uh, you see like introducing the common js uh, modeling yep now people are moving to esm yes. uh, thing but uh, still uh, like this this was a step, step, uh, step, step toward, uh, towards that, that i don't think like a uh, because um, uh, when I came to this node uh, environment, having this required syntax was a great uh, yeah. thing. Like uh, earlier, I used to do that uh, girl add everything together, um, and it was a pain. So I first uh, the common uh, the browser if I used to work with a common JS pattern, uh, so it simplified our tooling a lot. Uh, so yeah, it was a step. Um, then uh, there is a ESM uh, module definition where. Uh, you write something like a uh, import uh, react from react uh, or um, you can uh, have a named import uh, uh, something like uh, use uh, state or something um, and uh, this would again uh, synchronously load uh, your dependencies for that particular file um, this this is richer in syntax than uh, common js pattern but um, it then like um, both uh, solve the same problem uh, on a code level, you just, for a file, you define what you require. Uh, there is only one difference, like um, the import syntax, you can't have uh, any uh, dynamic value here. Uh, so you can't say ABC. Uh, this has to be static. The path should be static. And that is good as well, because uh, with that, you can uh, do a lot of static analysis. But um, with a common JS pattern, you can do something uh, uh, my lib and this will also work um, you can define your lib very well earlier uh, before uh, doing require uh, but you can't statically analyze <laughs> that but i think like one of the biggest thing i enjoyed in using common js like i can put it inside a if like if i need i would require if not i would require but i think in ESM uh -huh. uh, and require. the other thing is like with the esm module you can't have a conditional conditional import, uh, conditional import. You can do it though with uh, dynamic imports, uh -huh. but dynamic import again, uh, it's like a um, in require, mm -hmm. um, it would be uh, synchronously load, but uh, in a dynamic import, uh, uh, it would be like a load it lazily. Mm -hmm. uh, and which is uh, what people want every time. Uh, they don't, if they are uh, doing conditionally, they want to import, import it, it, uh, lazily. it lazily. Yeah, true. Is dynamic import a, a standard? Like, Dynamic. Yeah, how ES, ES imports are like a standard and uh, we're moving towards ES modules which support is dynamic import also like supported everywhere in dynamic imports are yeah I think a support are. no uh, right now people use Babel plugin for that no so uh, I'm not sure if Kuldeep, it is a Kuldeep stock we had right uh -huh. like he was using dynamic import for no but uh, is it uh, Part of a specification of yes, the model. Yep, yep. It's a part of the yes. Part of the yes. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, the one other thing with a dynamic import, um, let's say whatever you are importing, if it is a ESM module, then uh, because uh, it has to return an object, you can't have a ESM object here, right? Mm -hmm. So that you have to import some, like you have to use react.default. But React uh, is uh, exported as a normal module, so you can directly use React. But for other libraries, like uh, uh, let's say Lodash, Lodash. Uh, so you have to say Lodash.default or some uh, function name. Yeah, and those are like getters, right? They just give us like. These are mostly getters. Let uh, someone ask something. Can I use? Okay. Uh... Yeah, that's just the support for uh, uh, dynamic imports. I think someone asked if it is supported all everywhere. Oh, okay. And it has a very good support, uh, yeah. except I. I it yeah, has, has support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. I think there are some polyfills also for it. I mean, like some 
like it is yeah this, this is polyflavor polyfill, uh, yeah same is what uh, this uh, babel plugin uh, dynamic import uh, does uh, polyfill and then there was uh, something called amd uh, pattern uh, in amd pattern you have to define your all definition beforehand like you have to define that uh, what react uh, what is the path of uh, react source what would be path of your uh, um, like a project file source so you have to define all those paths uh, beforehand uh, using required just uh, config uh, method um and then uh, you can use this required js uh, you define all the dependencies as array and uh, then you will get uh, your dependency uh, on the callback and then you can start using it uh, this this was again uh, dynamic import uh, it it's it doesn't block uh, your main uh, thing to stop and then um, uh, there is a uh, something called system js import and system js import um, is uh, uh, like a super set of all type of import so the entry file only you have to import uh, with a system import js and inside app.js you can either use amd you can use uh, esm modules you can use a uh, common js pattern um, and the system uh, uh, js is smart enough to figure out like um, what type of dependency uh, internally uh, uh, it's using and then um, load uh, then load uh, it uh, in a certain way i think the best part about system js is that it like it runs on the browser fully in comparison yes, to other yes. it runs but uh, uh, the one thing i'm not sure because system js apply transformation on the script you are loading yeah i think like what people used to do is that when they use system js they if there is transformation they again use it back like they kind of okay. use a, uh, so there, there is a jspm JS for, that. for that so uh if you have jspm then you can uh, predefine your all the dependencies yeah. Yeah. but if you don't then uh, you have to do the transformation, transformation. cost on, uh, on, on the browser, browser itself browser, browser. Uh, itself so system js work very well with jspm um so now uh, the thing is like uh, this esm module uh, is supported on all browser all the major browsers uh, so why don't just use uh, uh, this modules why to depend on a bundler uh, itself uh, and uh, the like i think this is visible right uh, code i should show more okay so there was a podcast on uh, like i think js party they were mm -hmm. actually talking about the similar use case they were saying that like why should we like we should start basing with pack mm -hmm. and so we should just use full on esm module by doing that we can do a lot of optimization like for example if we start using just uh, native esm we can tomorrow cache all the files if mm. just a single file changes we just download that file end of the day we are bundling multiple we have multiple bundles but mm. a single bundle consists of four five files so if i change a single file i blow up the cache of a single bundle so they were talking about uh, like if we have a bundler which like natively uses esm we can just like cache in file level and we can like that would be great like it'd be easy for everyone to but again uh, it would have the same versioning problem right like uh, if you are saying uh, on a code mm -hmm. you are saying uh, i want to include bar.mjs and yeah. import you can't have a dynamic dynamic, uh, yeah, uh, dynamic that, that's true but like what they were trying to say is that not a lot of transpilation from the bundler the bundler yeah. would do mm -hmm. the versioning thing but not a lot of transpilation from no, the but, uh, the versioning is a big problem here okay. because uh, if you are saying um, i am importing module.mjs in mm -hmm. module.mjs okay so first let's see what the pattern yeah, look sure. like um so you can just uh, add a script tag with a type module and people follow this mjs uh, uh, mjs extension for module but um, you can like just write dot js it would work mm -hmm. uh, it basically uh, figure out based on the type uh, you are giving um, and inside a module js you can use either a absolute path or you can use a relative path and this relative path uh, is not relative to your page source mm -hmm. page url uh, it's a relative to the script uh, which you are loading yeah. so it would be relative to module uh, dot js uh, which is good uh, like um, you can write the same way you write your code like yeah. uh, yeah but that's true i think we can also find out the url in import.meta i'm not sure like yeah you yeah. can you can uh, find but the, the problem with uh, 
the import dot meta can only give you meta data, but because uh, this import syntax has to be static. Ha, ha, true. You, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. you can't uh, add some variable here a plus something. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, because of which um, you can't even do uh, uh, many versioning. Yeah. For versioning, you have to uh, figure out a different uh, strategy. But is it like if we kind of use an import map in which like I think there is a specification for it which is not yet available I think okay like we can say a map of like if I say like dot m bar dot mjs okay. okay like it's a very uh, like a system this like system this yeah. you define your yeah. map before and but the problem with the map again would be like uh, um, you have to know map uh, so this uh, you are trying to avoid tool mm -hmm. now to know the map uh, either you have to manually write that map. map. Or uh, you have to create uh, that with a tool. Tool, yeah. But then, when you are creating with a tool, why not build everything? Build everything with a tool. Yeah. Like probably what I would like argue in that part is like let's say like we would have a bundler, but not like very complex bundler, a very simple bundler that like not even a bundler, but a tool which will help us to do those niche things. Like yeah. Uh, doing the important yeah, things. Yeah. I agree. Um, the but other problem is like um, uh, for node modules. Mm -hmm. So. Now I have to do node modules like this. I can't say just like an import through from uh, uh, Lodash, Lodash uh, yeah. um, because that that uh, is not supported at all. Um, it has to be relative path or absolute path. Uh, and resolving this, this is not uh, what I code, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly I would be coding just uh, Lodash. Uh, then uh, I have to manually write uh, those maps that uh, Lodash pointed to this particular CDN path. Yep, yep. I think that like the, the JSPM that you pointed out, like they're trying to exactly do the same. Mm -hmm. It's also again a tool which doesn't run on browser, but we need to do all the setup in a while we are developing it. Mm -hmm. We say like JSPM install Lodash. Mm -hmm. So it automatically generates that for us in the map file. Mm -hmm. And we just say import Lodash. We don't care about the mapping, but the tool does it for us. But once it is done, we can just deploy it uh, to the browser. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Got it. I think having here absolute and like relative path makes sense, right? Because this is this is like a script tag which you're executing on the browser, and browser does not have any node modules in it. So you, even if you like, how will the browser resolve that it has to go inside node modules? So uh, uh, what I was saying is like um, when I write a single module file, at that right. time um, uh, adding this everywhere uh, would be not very uh, like. Uh, I would not prefer that. Uh, I, I get it. I, I understand. I'm just saying like what the solution would be then going to the bundler, right? Uh, because because what the bundler will do is when you write import Lodash from Lodash, it actually goes inside node modules, fetches that and pastes it into your final bundle.js. Right? Yes. yes. So uh, yeah, means the solution would go to a bundler. Right. Um, the uh, other major problem with uh, this was uh, uh, you can't trace it uh, because uh, that's a tooling uh, thing which can be handled. But because you're just loading a script file, um, the tree sec uh, would not work uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the ESM modules. But now people are uh, building a smaller and smaller uh, ESM modules. Mm -hmm. So that would that's not a uh, current case, but still there are a lot of libraries which uh, doesn't have a proper um, uh, this type of uh, like a have every function on a separate, separate file. file. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, like I think Lodash like tries to do it in ES. Like it has a separate file all the huh. file, but not of not not like that that follows uh, exactly. that pattern. So uh, again, the tree sake uh, would be a major problem. So let's say if you do this, import uh, something from a Lodash, this would internally. Uh, trigger 52 or 53 Down uh, file downloads. Uh, file uh, downloads because uh, uh, there will be again uh, import syntax inside load as uh, ES. So um, yeah, that that's a uh, it's, it's not a, a very viable solution. Uh, your module in browser. So we have to kind of use. Uh, um, one or other uh, build tool for at least our production side for a uh, smaller uh, like a side project we could probably use this but not for like a production yeah. sites yeah it's, it's it's like it would like reduce the like you know onboarding time for anyone yeah like yeah. starting with the uh, javascript and then setting up an entire bundle they can just like have some small tool which does this alone mm -hmm. but they can just start 
writing these things it's okay not being concise at first but mm-hmm. it will be helpful for them to get started yes um so let's let's see yeah. so we talked about the uh, webpack uh, a lot uh, now let's see how does the webpack uh, work uh, but before that uh, let's first see how does the webpack configuration looks like uh, and we'll just go certain uh, certain properties not all the properties uh, to not get overwhelmed uh, but yeah so webpack has uh, this uh, uh, which can be development or production and that is just like a uh, that uh, giving a mode uh, uh, enables or uh, Uh, all those uh, default values for a production mode like um, uh, minify would uh, automatically happen on production mode uh, your uh, 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 dev, dev, uh, dev server will just start on a development mode uh, and lot of uh, those manifest will be generated only on a production mode and uh, such type of uh, thing can happen directly by defining mode um, then we have a entry path so you can give a multiple entry path but uh, let's take a very uh, like a uh, basic use case uh, of uh, having a entry file uh, so you have a single entry file and then on that entry file uh, uh, you recursively go inside so you provide a base entry path okay. Uh, you provide a base entry path and then uh, apply all those. Uh, uh, you can start uh, processing uh, those files, and then there is an output where you say like uh, um, you want to uh, keep all those uh, bundle thing on one of the uh, bundle file, or you can uh, have a different strategies for output. Uh, but uh, there will be some single uh, output, and then there will be uh, separate common chunks or async chunks. and then uh, you can uh, provide uh, different type of plugins um, so let's say for this we needed a html webpack plugin so we added here uh, you can have a um, common chunk common chunk uh, is not required any other yeah thing? i think with this topic with uh-huh. like three i think but but there are uh, you, you can uh, basically uh, have your own uh, plugins as well uh, the main part is this module so Uh, in the module, uh, you define like uh, if you are, let's say, if you are saying on your entry file, if you are saying import foo from foo or import style from style dot css, um, how to process that particular file? Like uh, uh, css file can be directly added, right? So uh, that has to be handled in a different way, and that is where uh, your uh, uh rules come into picture so let's say you want to say like a for js file uh, you want to transform your es6 code into es5 using babel and you provide a babel loader there um on if there is any import with uh, css on the end then um, uh, do css uh, loader and css loader will have a specific logic uh, uh, to process uh, css so uh you define a loader for a different type of file uh, with just say like a loader is just like a how to how to work with that particular uh, type of file now um we will go uh, vivek uh, do you want to uh, show that example uh, so i had uh, something here uh, there, uh, um as i have uh, written down as a point what are the different step happens uh, okay. uh but you can first uh, uh, explain on that and then i can uh, uh, just uh, walk through the points so people uh, understood all right so i just i uh, i wanted to give a simple example uh, of uh, screen, uh, you can share your screen i will i will do that so i just wanted to give an example of how a simple uh, mm, bundled file and how all those dependency resolution happens uh, mm-hmm. so i have certain code snippets uh, that i have like that, that i can quickly share instead of mm-hmm. uh, let me find the button to all right so i 
need to share my entire screen okay Okay, I think I'll have to like uh, go out and restart this. So just give me a minute. Yeah. Um, oh, you are not getting the share option. You could ask for some permissions for the training test. No, I just don't uh, ask for any permission. I think he left. So I have actually created a project which uh, explains how this different tests work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you able to share now? Now I can. Yes. Can I? Can you all see my screen? Yeah, you can see. Okay, so I just wanted to, to uh, show like how, how a mini bundler would actually look like. So I have these uh, three files uh, that are available here. One is my entry file, which has like an import message from messages. So th these are just three simple files that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. You see message file is actually importing uh, another file, which is from hello world. Uh, I'm export defaulting something from that. And finally, hello world has another something which is just exporting a message out of it. So mm -hmm. how all these things work together and finally you have a bundle which looks like uh, a webpack bundle that you see usually in your in your files is basically what what webpack does is it will it will actually be so in a, in a webpack bundler what happens is you give it an entry file and it basically reads the content of that file and then starts parsing it. So how, how that in simple term looks like is something here. So you, you pass a file here, it will read the content of that file and then it tries to parse, create an AST out of it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so when this particular file will be parsed. So if I say, okay, let's, let's just copy paste this one by one here. And if I, if I, let's say do a console dot log of an EST here. And I say, okay, let me parse a file to it, which is uh, entry dot JS. So it, it has given me some AST here. Uh, but what I need to do is when I parse this file, which is here, my file content. So this was my file. I tried to import a file, which was entry.js. It had import statements in it and a console.log. Now what I want to do is I want to parse this file and get out all the dependencies that this file has. So this file is trying to import something that's an, uh, that, that is coming from a message file. So I want to mark that as a dependency here. So what I do is I create an AST tree uh, out of that entire thing. And then basically I create a dependencies array and say, give me everything that's an import declaration inside this. So what it's trying to do is it will find all the import declarations and push them as a dependency here. So with this entire code, what this mini bundler will actually look like is So it says, okay, this particular file has a dependency on message, which is coming from dot slash message. So now I have somehow know that this particular, if I, if I point, if I pass a file to this particular function, it is always going to give me what all import statements are there inside this file. So mm -hmm. let's say I had something else here in my entry dot JS, I would have imported something like a hello world also here. And then we have run my bundler. Now it will give me two files. Okay. I'm importing two files and importing a message here and I'm importing a hello world. So somehow I have a function now, which can actually find out what the, what all import statements I have. 
So mm-hmm. we are one way there. This is how Webpack also does. It parses your code and finds out what all import statements you have. And then once it finds out an import statement, it actually goes inside that file and finds out what all import statement that file has. So that is how this entire dependency tree is created. Mm-hmm. So what this simple function here is going to do is let's, let's define something. Let's say, okay, now we have all the dependencies. Let's just return an object out of here saying this object will have an ID. Uh, we'll have a file name that we are going to return. And then we are also going to return this dependencies array. So how this will now look like is layers in this one as well, because I'm replacing him. He was being brought into this. Sorry, what was that? Some, uh, it felt like some rob- robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the ESPN uh, narration, ESPN uh, cricket commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please tell me if it's if it's going too fast or if it's just uh, too much for the session and we are going to like use too much of the time then we can just quickly just uh, no, no, it's fine. like uh, we don't have to cover everything but um, uh, so i have uh, uh, something on the same topic but i will quickly grow, go through that uh, okay. so project and i will show like uh, how the dependency graph on webpack looks like and how okay. they use that to find a common chunk and um, uh, do tree seeking uh, with that Understood. All right. Uh, uh, Sudanshu. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you? Uh, I mean, if you can cover uh, the tree shaking in terms of, um, I mean, ASTs, like how it reads and then uh, how how all uh, it separates out and then you know it removes all the clutter. I mean, uh, unnecessary code. I mean, if you can show like. Uh, I'll I, I'll not say the actual uh, like uh, the code uh, of it. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I'll uh, give uh, like a. Type of thing, <laughs> but I will be explaining that. Okay, cool. thanks. <laughs> uh, hey, you, you were uh, you stopped sharing. Vivek, uh, he left. Uh, I think he dropped. Oh, oh, uh, I stopped sharing because you said you want to show something, right? No, 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 no. no, no. You, you continue, you finish uh, your thing, and then. Oh, okay. I was saying that thing, please, yeah. please continue. Right. So, uh, so what happens right now is I've created a very simple function, which takes any file you give it to it. And this will tell you what the dependencies are, what that file name is. And we have an ID identifier to uniquely identify this module for us. So how that looks like for us is see, I, I get an ID, I get a file name saying, okay, Hey, this is entry.js and these are the two dependencies that this file has. So now I have a function which can actually create this for me. Now, what I want to do is I want to get every dependency that a particular file has and then go inside that module and do the same thing for all of them. So this is basically saying, Hey, I want to create a graph and with the graph, I will give it an entry file and then I need to do the same things for every file that's inside it. So this basically means I'm going to go through every file. I'm, I'm going to start from the entry file, find all the import statement, and then recursively keep calling this function so that I have like a big graph that's built. So mm-hmm. just to like utilize on the time here, what I'm going to do is let me just have this, let me just copy paste this entire thing that I have. Uh, Vivek, a quick question. Yeah. So what, what happens if we have circular dependencies? So this is a simple example. <laughs> you know, I'm just asking how do you think we can handle it? Not cross uh, you, you can uh, keep adding that on array, like what all dependencies okay. you have to process. Okay. And then um, you don't have to process, like uh, mm-hmm. you don't have to go deep down on that. Okay. So you just have to maintain a map. Uh, map of it. So uh, we can find some cycles and. Yeah, uh, you, you can find uh, the cycles. So we saw above that, okay, uh, the main asset, uh, we can create an asset like that. So now what we need to do is we need, we'll pass an entry file here, like how Webpack does, you have an entry file. So mm-hmm. same, similarly, the entry file that you pass to Webpack goes to a function, let's say a hypothetical function like graph. What it does is it will go to this create asset function and say, okay, I've given you an entry file, give me an asset back. So that asset will look something like this ID zero file name is this and that initial entry file has a dependency on message. Mm. Now we put that into a queue so that we can start processing it like a, like, like sort of a recursive function, but inside a queue. So what I do is I here 
this is what that initial queue looks like. If you see it has just one entry in it, which is our main asset, which is the main entry file. Now we go through all of these files and say, okay, hey, whatever dependencies you had, I want to now create the module or an asset for all of them. So I go to all the dependencies and then I create another, I create a child asset out of it saying, okay, now take this file, which was my message.js and create another asset. So it has created another child asset for me saying ID one. And now the file name is message.js that had a dependency on hello world. So now if I just call this graph here with my entry file and show you the output, this is how it looks like. And this is how Webpack's output also looks like. It says, okay, hey, you have, you have an entry.js which has a dependency on message and hello world. And then you say, okay, where is message located? So I say, okay, message is actually ID number one. So that's where my different other file is. Hello world is ID number two. So you say, okay, it has a file name, hello world, and it has certain dependencies. Message.js has a dependency on hello world and that hello world file is basically ID number three. So that's how Webpack is also resolving your file. So you give Webpack an entry file and you say the dependencies and you also specify how to find that file because it's one huge bundle. It's not, it's not, it's not dynamically being fetched or an async chunk at the moment. So you need to specify Webpack. Where is that file located? So I'm oh. saying okay, message is actually ID number one. Hello world is actually ID number two. So when Webpack is actually parsing through your entire module, it actually sees, okay, where is ID number two and get the file for that and execute it. So this is, this is how it basically builds the graph for you. And that's how it, it looks like it says ID number one dependencies mapping and all those things. And finally, what it does is it have to bundle your entire code for you. So what is going to do is it's going to, this is very complex, but what it's basically doing is it's actually taking every, it's basically making a string because it has to finally write to a file, which is your output.js. So it's basically creating a string and inside that string, it's actually storing an object value mapping. The, the key of that object is the ID, which, which, which will be an identifier for that module. And the value is the function that we need to execute and the mapping file. So if I just quickly execute this, So this is how this entire thing, and this is how your Webpack modules also Webpack final bundle also would in a way like look like it basically it base if you see in the second section in the lower section, it says it's an object and there is an ID here zero, which mm -hmm. basically has two entries in it. One, the function that I need to execute, it's showing undefined. We'll rectify that, but it basically shows you the function that we need to execute and the mapping file here. Again, the function that I need to execute and the mapping file and this whole module is what will be basically returned to your. Uh... So Webpack uh, has a uh, little bit different uh, value for that uh, uh, every ID. So it will have the information about uh, which bundle uh, it belongs to um, in that particular bundle, uh, how to find uh, that particular uh, uh, function. Uh, it would not inline everything uh, uh, as ID and uh, this thing. This information goes to runtime.js. Uh, we'll say that. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So when when this when when you finally basically create your bundle, it's it's it basically looks something like this, like not exactly like this, but you will see an ID and a value mapping, and then if you if 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 you just execute this then it will, it will create. So this is, this is what your final bundle basically looks like it, in a way, in a simpler, in a simpler bundle, this is how it looks like it has an ID and a value to it. And what Webpack does is when you, uh, when I say import message from message. So here, if you see, uh, 
I have converted all this ES ES calls into common JS calls. So when you see require hello world here, the one that I have highlighted, it's actually not going to hello world or JS. It is actually going to the mapping file and asking, okay, which ID does hello world belongs to? So I say, okay, hello world belongs to ID number three. And so it basically goes to ID number three and executes this function. Mm -hmm. So that's how Webpack uh, or any simpler module bundler also resolves it for you. It's not actually importing that file. It's, it's all there in that bundle separated with different IDs. So when you say require message or require hello world, it basically checks, okay, which ID this hello world belongs to. So it says belongs to ID number three. So it basically goes to three and then executes that function over here. Mm -hmm. I think like, this, uh, like when I have also lipped into like this parcel bundle, mm -hmm. so they were using like parcel request. So I think everyone has their own way of calling request. Uh, yeah, yeah. Means, uh, um, the thing is like um, here, because everything on us uh, was on a single bundle, <coughs> you can inline that. But uh, uh, if it spans across uh, mm -hmm. bundles, then uh, you can't uh, have and, uh, the code mapping. So um, instead, you have you need to have like a ID with a uh, module uh, mapping. And module mapping could be your uh, path for that uh, file, or it can be just like uh, the file name. Uh, or another, that, another script file that or, or, or it uh, had some like a lazy uh, uh, part of it. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, on a nutshell, um, um, you have uh, ID and your uh, bundle mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, now that can be a string or like a, that can load asynchronously. Uh, that depends on the use case. Mm -hmm. But uh, you'll have some ID associated with your uh, module so that uh, you can. Uh, your files uh, properly. I have uh, uh, one more example of the same thing, um, which uh, would also cover uh, how uh, common chunking and tree seeking would work. So let's go into that. Um, I'll just delete this part for now. I'll just keep this. Uh, so as we saw, um, um, for any, but there are three main phases, right? Uh, uh, you traverse, you transform, uh, you create dependency graph, and then uh, uh, you concatenate uh, uh, files. Uh, you create a, you create chunks. Uh, you create bundles, basically. Um, so this four uh, thing, if you see uh, with, in a perfect term. Um, and we'll go through file by file and we'll see like what happens uh, on each of this. So let's say uh, we have an um, and uh, we started from entry. Uh, we took that file to process. Uh, now this is where uh, we'll apply all the loaders uh, on the process part. Um, uh, and uh, after those loaders are applied, um, we will find the dependencies. And the reason behind uh, applying loaders before uh, uh, finding dependencies is uh, uh, you can have a certain um, uh, aliasing uh, defined on your uh, configuration. And if you don't, so it will not work. So loaders have to be applied before finding the uh, next dependency. And uh, you do it recursively until you find uh, uh, like all, all those dependency graphs are created. So you do this two, three, four step, uh, two to four step recursively. And then uh, once you have a dependency graph available uh, with you, uh, you analyze that dependency graph uh, from your web page configuration. Uh, now uh, you can have a certain strategies defined. Like uh, you can say like, uh, I don't want, uh, I don't want a common chunk, build everything on a single chunk. Or uh, uh, for this particular case, uh, if the file matches to particular case, then uh, keep it on a different chunk. So uh, based on that uh, graph dependency, it uh, has to figure out like what would be the output. And then uh, at the end, it uh, start concatenating uh, your files. Um, and uh, during the concatenation time, uh, after that, uh, it will apply tree sec. And uh, we'll see like why tree sec can't be applied before. Uh, tree sec, uh, why tree sec has to happen during the concatenation phase, uh, during creating that bundle phase. 
uh, the port port phase. Um, and um, at the end, uh, it will uh, keep all those mappings uh, like uh, the ID to uh, module mapping, what uh, you saw on the Vivex example. Um, it will keep on a runtime JS if you are giving uh, a configuration. Otherwise, it will keep on the entry file uh, .js. So uh, let's let's see uh, on example uh, how does our module graph uh, would look like for this example. So we have uh, let's say entry file is this. We have imported uh, uh, foo there. Uh, so our let's just start writing this. So we have entry .js. And inside entry.js, uh, now we have imported. So dependency of this is foo.js. And then we have uh, loaders.js. And at the same time, I can also mark what all dependencies are uh, I'm using from the loaders.js. So I'm just using the clone method of it. Um, then I have a uh, style.css and uh, and then uh, I'm doing some dynamic import. So I also have a uh, bar uh, dot JS. Okay. Now, uh, uh, as uh, you see, like, uh, as you saw that uh, it would go recursively. So let's go on a foo dot JS. Uh, in the foo dot JS, uh, you will have, uh, uh, we are importing something from math dot JS. So uh, math dot JS is a dependency. And we are just using the some method there, and then uh, we would go load as uh, for now. Let's uh, skip. Uh, will not go. What is the dependency of load as? I will uh, because it's third party module. Same same is with uh, style dot CSS. We'll just skip uh, this thing, um, and then let's see what part dot JS. So we go on a part. Of and uh, also we mentioned uh, this as a async chunk because uh, we were loading bar.js as a async thing. Um, in bar.js, uh, we are again using math. Math.js uh, using the multiply method. Okay. Uh, now, uh, given this, uh, now uh, I will have uh, all uh, the uh, module ID as we saw there. So we'll have zero, one, uh, two, three, and four. Um, now uh, we see that uh, like uh, whenever there is a, a synchronous uh, part, we have to uh, we uh, we have to create it as a separate bundle. So uh, two things we know like uh, there will be uh, at last, we'll have a bundle.js, which will have everything. And then there should be uh, a synchronous chunk, which is a bar.js. These two things are uh, uh, which we know before and now in bundle.js, uh, we can keep uh, all of uh, uh, this thing. So uh, all of this would come here. Um, and uh, even uh, the math can come here, but we'll see like uh, what happens with that. Uh, now we clearly see uh, that bar.js has a common chunk, like bar.js and foo.js have uh, uh, are pointing to the same file. There is uh, uh, math.js, which is uh, so uh, bar.js, foo.js both are pointing to math.js. So instead of uh, 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 adding it uh, on both, uh, what we can do is uh, uh, new chunk. Uh, let's call it common.js. Uh, in common.js, we'll keep uh, probably mat.js. Uh, now, here we can see like uh, uh, we just need uh, multiply and uh, this some method. Now, this creating common chunk. Uh, 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 creating this common chunk is based on your webpack configuration. So um, if you, by default, what it will uh, do, because uh, uh, foo.js and bar.js, both are uh, imported within entries. Right? So if there is a common chunk between uh, those two children files, then uh, uh, it keeps uh, it like a uh, that particular common dependency to a parent file. 
So uh, by default, mat.js would come here. But uh, we are seeing like, uh, you no, know, we want mat.js as a separate file. And our Webpack config uh, would look something like this then. Uh, like this. Just to add to that, I think the reason behind that is like we need to have a caching for third parties, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because like if you add it to the main bundle, uh, we would be busting our cache even if we yes uh, yeah. doing some changes and the math never changed. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if uh, it is always better to uh, split on a smaller chunks. Um, so here uh, in a like optimization, we are saying uh, um, whenever there is a, a code which is common between two chunks, create a new chunk, um, and you can also provide a cache group. I'll not go deep on that, but uh, you can say like what what will be the name of uh, those common chunks. So let's say the name would be common chunks. Now um, this is how uh, creating common chunks work. Um, from this dependency graph, it says like uh, what all dependencies are duplicated across chunks, and how uh, it can be optimally uh, separated out. So uh, either you can put it on a parent chunk, or you can create a uh, different async chunk. So in this case, we have to do a async chunk. Um, can can people mute? Uh, uh, yeah. So now a uh, bundle JS. Uh, I got uh, information like uh, if I am creating so bundle JS have uh, chunks called uh, foo.js so it has one it has uh, actually it has an entry file so zero uh, one zero one and then uh, what else are there uh, two entry two entry bar.js uh, has a children dependency of uh, uh, bar.js uh, which has uh, uh, four and common chunk have common chunk have a dependency on uh, match so just uh, five okay uh but or just but or just doesn't have anything so it uh, yeah uh, it just have uh, itself and uh, the uh, other thing is uh, any separate right so this is how common chunking would work. Um, uh, you can define a different strategy. So we can even say, uh, but uh, okay, actually, uh, first see how tree seeking would work on this case. So now, um, after creating this uh, final dependency graph, so from the older dependency graph, we'll create what is the expected uh, dependency graph. And in this dependency graph, we have all those information. Like uh, uh, in mat.js, we might have multiple uh, uh, We have multiple functions. We have a sum, multiplication. Uh, we have a subtract and divide. Um, now, we see on this dependency graph that uh, uh, only multiplication and sum is being used somewhere. And which which we were uh, able to identify during creating this bundle graph. So what what we can uh, probably do is like uh, we can remove other part uh, of uh, this application. So let's say uh, there is a function which is a test uh, uh, which you are not using on one of the function uh, you are creating, or if you are using it, uh, test test. So it will, uh, it can statically analyze it, and then it knows that uh, I need test, but uh, the sub and divide is not being used anywhere. I can probably remove it. Um, I, I need only those things which are uh, required inside uh, sum and multiplication. Everything else, I can uh, just remove it. So uh, at this point, uh, during creating a bundle, at this point, a bundler uh, can decide like uh, this is a unused export. So just uh, tree set them. This, this is clear, right? It's kind of like dead code elimination. This is kind of dead code elimination. But uh, uh, this, because uh, it is span across multiple chunks. Mm -hmm. So 
डेट कोड एलिमिनेशन जनरली अगली फाइल कैन वर्क इफ इट इज अगल फाइल बट मल्टीपल बिकॉज मैट डॉट जेस इज ऑन कॉमन चार एंड एट दिस पॉइंट इट डजेंट नो लाइक वेदर इट्स बीन यूज और नॉट सो you need uh, that information mm-hmm. about like where it has been used, used. so that that dependency graph really helps here yeah uh, so the dependency graph uh, tells you that information uh, i have a question around this so, so the dependency graph will tell you it's being used to where but then what do you do you, does the webpack like go through all that file and see oh hey are you using it if you're not then i'll remove it how does that happen so during creating the initial graph um, we marked what all imports we are doing right so if you are doing in import so mat.js we use some uh, in foo.js mat.js uh, we use some in bar.js from mat.js we use multiplication now when we created a, a like a final dependency graph it just merge all those dependencies understood but if I, so if this means that if i am doing like uh, uh, an import lodash from lodash Yes. Or import star from Lodash and then yeah. using just math and sum, then it won't be able to do it. No, no, it yeah. it won't be able to uh, uh, do that. Um, so it would keep uh, everything. That's why you should avoid the star uh, thing. Um, the same thing. Uh, I I tell you. Uh, let's uh, let's say if you are exporting uh, like this, if you are using module export, even this can can't be three second because what you are effectively doing is uh, exporting an object. now wherever you would be using it uh, you would be using it in a way uh, let's say go to foo.js uh, you would be using something like uh, uh, math and then say math dot sum now um, while it is creating a bundle common js that time it, that time it can't know that you are using some method of uh, math right at this point when it is creating bundle it doesn't have those knowledge if math is being used or not uh, sorry uh, other methods of uh, math is being used or not so if you are exporting it as a like a normal common js pattern uh, your uh, thing will not work or the same case is uh, with a uh, star uh, if you are saying import star as uh, math and then you do that so what will happen when it is processing food or js it will say i need everything from this so um, here uh, this will have everything so it will not reset so this means that when we when we let's say when uh, usually when we are writing utility classes or utility functions we hmm. usually define them as say const util equal to an object and then you define all the functions inside that, them uh, that is so a wrong that, that will also not work right that will also not work yes so you need to like define individual functions and then export them individually from that module yes yes exactly uh, okay yeah so i feel like suppose let's say you we talk like this tree shaking happens only we do concatenation mm-hmm. at that point in time we might have applied the aggregation right we would not have applied uh, no no, no. Uh, the aggregation would happen after bundle is created bundle. those plugin works uh, okay so there is one more uh step you can say create bundle and uh, then uh, apply tree shaking and then do the uh, so uh, during create bundles it does tree shaking okay uh, before, before creating bundle, bundle. Okay. uh but after creating bundle uh, it will apply those uh, post post okay. uh, post uh, plugins yeah because wh- why i was thinking that way is that if we do aggregation of friend we may not be able to tree shake yes, because yes, we would have yes. different names in different bundles yes yes so this uh, this is clear uh, to everyone right uh, how the tree shaking works yep 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 okay um now um let's uh, take a, a different example and uh, you people tell me what will happen on that case if i said uh, min chunks equal to 3 uh, in this case what will happen so i am saying like that it has to be shared across three files uh, to create as a separate chunk i have a question yeah yeah uh, uh can you go back to that bundle.js file uh bundle.js file uh you are talking about uh, entry.js so yeah the yeah entry.js there was the sum function inside that sum you are calling the test right you created a test function math function 
पर्टिकुलर फाइल and figure out uh, that apart from uh, sum and multiplication what all function like uh, what all function are used within sum and multiplication and mm. uh, leaving those um, uh, remove all other code so the test is used here like uh, inside yeah. a sum function so mm. has to keep the test okay yeah. okay yeah makes sense but if it is not used here then uh, it it wouldn't so it has to do a static analysis again at this phase mm -hmm. all right all right all right yeah thank you um uh, now uh, yeah so what what would happen uh, if we say min chunk is equal to 3 i don't think we would have a common case we do do we yeah means uh, like now we are enforcing that uh, it has to be 3 3 so we don't have a common case here so what uh, basically will happen uh, that math js will come here and math ideally math js will just be on bundle.js but i am just giving a different example like let's say uh, you don't have a common question uh, 4 and 5 and let me see okay so uh, now i have a math js which requires sum here and this one requires multiplication here so now what will happen um math js would be analyzed twice okay and on one part it will uh, dead code eliminate all other thing than sum and it will add the uh, only sum function on the bundle js mm -hmm. and uh, on the next bundle bar dot js it will just keep the multiplication function uh, there okay so because since it's brought because it's a different uh, okay. different bundle because yeah, i may not even asynchronously recover it any point in time so yes. keeping yes. it keeping multiple keeping it in bundle will be waste of time uh, yes Good. yes Good. yes Good. yes so um, um, and this can uh, this can also be configured okay like uh, this Uh, in such cases you can say like uh, uh don't keep it on uh, bar dot js just keep some and multiplication here only because we don't want some extra bundling e yes but, uh, but uh, uh, let's say if you don't want that you can keep mat dot js with bar js okay uh, but it will be with a bundle like it will not be asynchronously loaded mm -hmm. uh, but it will be part of a bar dot js and uh, this mat dot js would be part of the bundle dot js and we can also prefetch the bar that js also right at this point yeah like you it. you can uh, prefetch uh, the bar js uh, mm -hmm. those are like application logic right mm -hmm. yeah so this this is clear right uh, the tree seeking and creating common chunk uh, thing Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you uh there is one more step like mangling right which will uh, create some uh, pseudo names for all the functions and objects and everything right? uh, after creating bundle post plugin those yeah. are the post plugins i think uh, i mean uh, what i understood is like mang uh, before uh, uh, what do you call post in even in the order even in the post plugins order there are like minification uh, compression mm -hmm. mangling uh -huh, uh -huh. right i think mangling should mangling should happen first and then yes yes uh, and uh, then others uh, should kick in uh, uh, post that right is that order correct or uh, like uh, yeah yeah then uh, mix sense like uh, the mangling would have but it doesn't matter because uh, for a ast uh, if you are just removing spaces it doesn't matter for uh, it so if you minify it minify is just removing spaces and uh, mangling is where you change the variable names okay okay um, but uh, so aggify has a two part like uh, it mangles as well as it do, does that code elimination so okay. um uh, within uh, this bar dot js i can have some dead code let's say i can have something like this um let's go on a bar dot js and after console log i 
uh, I can put console log after re return, right? So this console log is never. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. So correct. this dead code elimination will happen on ugly five phase. Okay, okay. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So this is there. Um. Now I was okay. But listen, there are two people who are actually doing a, a dead code removal yeah. here. Right? One yeah. is Webpack, which does tree shaking and removes the exports, which are no nowhere being imported. Yeah. And then yeah. on an uglyfier step, you are also doing a dead code em elimination, which maybe the Tursor plugin or uglyfier would be doing. Yes. It. yes. Correct. Uh, you you had a. Uh, Uh -huh. Multiply, divide, and subtract. Uh, okay, okay. So you are saying like uh, in in Fuji's you have a sum and multiply, and here it's a multiply and divide, something like this, right? Uh -huh. So in this, uh, so in this case, um, it would keep like a uh, if you are not created uh, creating a separate chunk. It will have a sum and uh, multiply here, and it will have a multiply and divide here. So uh, multiply would be duplicated between two chunks. And it happens like a, if you uh, if you are not deciding to have a separate common chunk, uh, there is a very valid case uh, that uh, one code can be duplicated across uh, multiple chunk files. So that would like duplicate even in asynchronous. It would it, it would duplicate, but uh, uh, this is uh, your strategy. Like a uh, let's say your common chunk file is uh, hundred KB. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not hundred KB, hundred bytes. You probably don't want to create a chunk for uh, that, right? Uh, if the chunk has just a hundred byte, uh, uh, loading, uh, making a network request for uh, that chunk would be parsing. Yes, yes. So uh, that's why, like, uh, you try to uh, fine tune, like, at what part you want uh, uh, less bytes to load versus uh, how much uh, you want, like, a caching uh, thing. So you you have to decide uh, between those, uh, and that that's why the webpack gives uh, like a, a lot of uh, configurations, uh, so you can fine tune based on your requirement. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we are stuck with this. Uh, now let just quickly see how the loader works. <laughs> Like it, the ML fitter also writes Webpack config for us. Who wants to write Webpack config? <laughs> so uh, we have uh, this here. Um, um, Sometimes even 15 inch screen feels like a small. Um, okay, so I'm not this bundle. Um, okay. Uh, in index.js file, uh, we are loading certain files. I'll just close this for now. Okay. Uh, in index.js file, we are uh, loading some JavaScript file and we are defining some or custom file name. So let's call it as a CJS, custom.js. And in custom.js, for now, we are just uh, keeping uh, uh, JSON. Now let's see how the loader would work uh, for this uh, and how we can create our own loader. So, um, maybe this is going out. Because it's CJS, I think, maybe because of that, it, it is constant. Okay, it, it is knows. treating it as JavaScript. JavaScript. Uh, take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. <laughs> so, uh, in a web pack, and now we will define different rules. Um, one for JS, which is a for normal file, and the other one for our custom file, uh, CJS. And we can actually uh, write the uh, loader uh, within our application, so you don't have to keep it separate. So our custom JS, uh, we, we provide like a, if there you get any CJS extension, uh, parse that particular file with uh, our loader, our own custom loader. So our custom loader would look something like this. And the thing is like a loaders are the easiest thing to build because it's just a function which receives a string, a string of a source file, and then you have to return a, another string. 
So you can do any parsing on parsing. that. <laughs> uh, like um, you get a source, uh, you can apply HT and do like a, some uh, complex parsing. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, in this case, because it's just a JSON, what I want to do is like um, export default and I want to put that uh, object. So now um, I will get uh, that on my index file. Now let's run this actually. Mm, yeah. Oh, sorry. It will not be logged here. It would be logged here. Um, no, no. Uh, the JSON would be logged. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, here we can see like uh, that particular object got logged because we are. Uh, uh, yeah. We we are logging the object. So um, this um, you you can write your loader to do some fancy stuff. Uh, uh, we can do like uh, loader. What we can do here is uh, show source dot replace a with b and just run uh, our loader. Yeah, you got a different object. So uh, loader now uh, nothing but just a function which accept a source by source. File. And this can be a result of a previous loader. Chaining the loader. Uh -huh. So basically the chaining work like that and whatever you're returning can go to a different loader. So, uh, and then there are certain method like uh, you can uh, pass some option. So there is like a utility loader util through which you can get uh, the option you are providing. So if we do this, if you pass some option that would come on uh, that particular object. And also instead of returning a string, you can call a callback. And in this callback, you can uh, probably give uh, uh, the output string, the second parameter as a source map. And uh, then third parameter is a metadata, which can be anything. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, this metadata is useful when uh, you're probably, let's say you have written two loaders. And on the next loader, you uh, here you are creating a AST of your source file. And then uh, you want to use the same HT on the next loader as well. So you can pass that uh, HT as a meta type, meta information. So this is just an object, uh, like this is just a parameter. parameter, you can pass anything. So we tell the next loader that, you know what, I did something, you should be aware of that kind of communication. So uh, it, it can do like a, a string will already be the transform thing. But let's say uh, you don't want to apply the, uh, this AST, AST again. AST again. Tuning it can uh, so okay, I already did the AST can use it. Yeah. For example, I can think it like, like we are doing the JSON transformation. You might want to also convert it to ES file. Yes. So you can give this to Babel. Yes. So you should Babel would convert into AST. So we don't yeah. want to be able to do again a heavy yeah. lifting. We tell like you can use the AST which I did. Yes. So one quick question that I have is that like when we do this custom transformation of ourselves, we need to be generating source map by ourselves, right? you have to you should be genetic source map like how uh, do we do, do that <laughs> so um uh, if you are doing like a babel uh this thing mm -hmm. i'm not sure if there is any module if you're like replacing if you're yeah, applying yeah, this thing exactly <laughs> i'm not sure if uh, there is a tool which can give you a uh, source mapping between these two this source tool. and path but babel ast gives gives so, uh, <laughs> uh if yeah. you're applying any ast transformation then it will give you a proper source okay. map um uh, I haven't, I haven't created a source map. Yeah, sure. but uh, the other thing is like uh, this meta meta information is most of the time useless because uh, uh, if you're creating a third party loader, uh, you don't know how the other loader will be consuming your output. So you always have to output uh, the string format. Uh, the like AST. It's up to the other loader to use AST or not. He may not even use the AST. Yeah, right? it means like you don't know, like uh, they might be expecting uh, object dot AST or the key name can be different. different. Okay. So this is only helpful when uh, you have multiple loaders. So you can uh, like a chain and uh, you can avoid some task there. Um, so yeah, you people can write a load. Uh, uh, I think we have covered most part of our agenda and we are already out of time.